Tonight, an update on the shooting at a synagogue in Pittsburgh. A third fake pipe bomb was found in the city of Buffalo. And two winners have been announced from Saturday's Powerball jackpot. WTOP 10 Nightly News starts now. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Jake Vanderbrook. And I'm Chelsea Garby. An estimated 11 people were killed and six people were injured in a synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh. This shooting is the deadliest attack in the United States against the Jewish community. According to New York Times, the assailant is identified as Robert D. Bowers. According to officials, Bowers fired several rounds of ammunition prior to officials entering the synagogue. Bowers has been charged with 29 criminal counts, including obstructing the free exercise of religious beliefs, a hate crime, and using a firearm to commit murder. Hundreds of people gathered in Squirrel Hill on Saturday evening for a candlelight vigil to remember the 11 victims of the Tree of Life synagogue shooting and show support for their families and the Jewish community. Pam Serrano was there. The community, which was the site of a horrifying mass murder earlier, became the site of a mass gathering of love. We all have so much more in common than we have to differentiate us. Um, and I think nights like tonight remind us of that. Candles illuminated the darkness, music filled the air, and community compassion was everywhere. The shooting that killed 11 at Tree of Life Synagogue was just blocks away from the grassroots service that drew nearly a thousand people. Cody Murphy lives near the shooting, and a man fleeing the bullets took refuge in her home. He's just trying to call his, his wife and his kids, just trying to let everyone know he was okay because he didn't have his phone because it is Shabbat. Murphy and others who are Taylor Alderdice High School students felt a need to be together and organize the candlelight service. Having people to talk to and like communicate with is just so helpful for people during this time because you want to do something, but there's not really anything you can do other than just share your love with others. We felt like something had to happen. If we felt like this, then how did the community feel? Everyone here echoing that sentiment, saying they had a powerful need to be together, including this family who all came together and described the moment they found out. When everything hit, I just, I ran to the congregation because most of my congregation does not use a cell phone on Shabbat. And so I didn't think that they knew what was going on. And so I dropped him off and I, I ran in and they were on lockdown and they welcomed me in and they had their doors open for anybody on Shady who needed refuge. Congressman Mike Doyle was among those attending as well. Our hearts are broken for the Jewish community here. Um, this was a senseless hate crime. Um, people were, you know, in a house of worship. Police forces in New York and Los Angeles are deploying forces forces to monitor local synagogues to prepare for any further attacks. According to the Onondaga County Sheriff's Office, deputies closed a Salina convenience store and arrested a Syracuse man after a Wednesday search found marijuana and untaxed cigarettes. Deputies raided the Maydell Express located at 2109 Brewerton Road and found pounds of marijuana and more than 8,700 untaxed cigarettes. The town of Salina Coast Department shut the store down for the time being. Deputies are still investigating and more charges are likely to come. According to Fire Chief Michael Munns, just over two dozen new firefighters have officially started their jobs, responding to fires and other emergencies across the city of Syracuse. The 26 new firefighters are all Syracuse residents and will immediately be deployed to fire stations throughout the city after graduation from the training academy. Police are investigating two separate stabbings which in the city of Syracuse. Both of the victims suffer non-life-threatening injuries. No suspects have been identified in either case. At 10.37 p.m. on Friday, police were called to Upstate University Hospital to meet with a 20-year-old man who was stabbed in the left side of his abdomen. The victim told police he was wounded near Fitch Street and Dudley Street but would not provide any other details. A police spokesman says officers were unable to find the scene of the crime. At 2.38 a.m., police again were called to Upstate University Hospital to meet with a 33-year-old man who was stabbed in the chest and lip. Police in Buffalo found a third fake homemade bomb that was placed in the middle of the streets. 
Police Captain Jeff Rinaldo told reporters police responded on Saturday morning after a report of a device outside a post office on South Park Avenue. Rinaldo says police are trying, to, trying their best to make sure this incident doesn't happen again. We always uh, adjust our resources as necessary. Um, we are definitely aware of the situation. We are looking at how we respond to these things, but again, in a lot of these cases, the goal of these people is to disrupt people's daily lives, and we're going to do everything we can to ensure that that does not happen. New York State will be investing in a total of $9 million in the Bel Air Mountain Ski Resort in an effort to increase tourism in the Catskills. The money will be going towards Bel Air's Discovery Lodge. The improvements include a new fire sprinkler system, an expanded rental shop, and more additional space with the on-site restaurant and on the outdoor deck. More than 2,000 high school students completed at the 45th Annual New York State F Field Band Co Conference Championships in the Carrier Dome. The students are from more than 50 high school marching bands from across the state. The smallest bands feature 38 students and the largest 200 students. Each band performed a 7 to 10 minute show for a panel of nearly a dozen judges. To see the results of the competition, go to Syracuse www. Go to www.syracuse.com. Now we are going to take a quick look at the forest cast from meteorologist Liam Healy. Liam, what do we got? Thanks, Chelsea. We're outside of the Shinneman Center right now, and I can tell you, it is cold out here. We're seeing temperatures right around 40 degrees across the entire area, and nonetheless, it's raining too right now. We see these on the radar. You have all these scattered showers around the area, continue through the night, and we're going to be seeing these into tomorrow. Make sure you tune in just after this short break for my full forecast. I'll have all you need to know for Halloween and beyond. You know who's going off in fantasy this week? Drew Brees. Brees with time. You know, you guys are sleeping on Odell Beckham Jr., though. I think he's scoring three TDs this week. And it throws its back and across the middle. No, tell me, the Bears' defense is what's going to go off this week. I mean, boom! Chicago Bears. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country. And as a parent, it's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger, especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Want to know all the latest things pop culture? Tune in to Let's Talk About It every other Monday at 10 p.m. Welcome back to WTOB 10 Nightly News. I'm Storm Team 10 meteorologist Liam Healy. Like you, said, like you saw when I was just outside just a few minutes ago, it was cold. There is some relief on the way. This is 6 to 10 day temperature outlook from NOAA. We're seeing these potential for warmer temperatures coming up next week but right now we're still seeing these scattered showers around the entire country we got some rain up here coming in that could be a system later in the week that we're going to be seeing but right now we are seeing these scattered showers right around here let's get a little closer to home check out what's going on just around the area we got some snow right up here by Tupper Lake as well as over by Glens Falls 
right here in Fulton in the, the Oswego area, we're seeing just these light showers that are going to be coming through. This right here, we have our, nor our nor'easter that's going to be affecting the coast tomorrow. We're only going to be seeing some scattered rain, and we're still dealing with these temperatures. They're chilly. They're around 40 degrees across the entire area. Not much with the lake. The lake's not really helping us out. There are southerly winds. We're not getting that lake warm influence. Around the rest of the state, again, it's going to continue to be chilly. We're going to be seeing this throughout the rest of the week. It's just going to be kind of a dreary week. Starting out, I mean, tomorrow, Monday, 7 a.m., you're seeing this rain coming right here into Oswego. We're going to be coming right through the entire day. You see a couple snow showers up in Canada. And as we get later in the day, Monday around 5.30, start seeing them in our area. These could be affecting your morning commute, your evening commute. I should say your evening commute, excuse me. But by about Tuesday, moving through the day, it's going to be all out of the area. Not too much to worry about Tuesday, but Monday, going to be a little bit affecting on your commute there. Your rain, your rain showers at, in the morning, and then you have at night, you have your PM commute. Rain, snow showers possible in some of the higher elevation areas. Watch out for those hills of Syracuse. Tonight, we're seeing these temperatures 41 degrees, winds out of the south. And tomorrow, again, steady rain at times. You're seeing winds 10 to 15 miles an hour coming out of the northwest. As you check out your trick or treat cast, your first look at your Halloween forecast here. Wednesday, 50 degrees right around trick or treat time, 7, 8 o'clock, getting those kids out. Can't deny bringing a jacket with you. Now, for a check on your seven day forecast, I'm going to take it right here. Your Halloween forecast, 52 degrees, going to be your high that day. And, like I said, dreary week. You're going to see the showers Thursday, Friday. Not a great way to start out your weekend, but at least the weekend's looking dry, though not very warm just yet. You're watching WTOB 10 Nightly News. We'll be right back. Absolutely, you know, Dan Kane, you know, this is his second year to have at least one shot. But communicate and just, you have to go back to the base. Absolutely, absolutely wrong. Because right now, one and two in the SUNY Aston. If you can win both of those games, sick and tired, Brandon. If the other team can win one point, they then Oh, absolutely. Come on. Just give me the one nothing lead, all right? Nope. Or watching Laker Connection. Connection here on WTOP 10. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hey, guys, I think I'm a little shiny. Can someone help with that, please? So you ready for tonight? Yeah, I think so. So, you know you're gonna start off the show like suspended from the ceiling, right? So you're all set with that. Um, so yeah, just remember everything else we talked about and make sure you follow the prompter. I mean, don't I always? No, just, just, just do what we talked about, okay? All right, no problem, let's go. Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. President Donald Trump has pointed to a caravan of migrants trekking north through Mexico as a major issue in the upcoming midterm elections. The caravan set out from Agria, Mexico early yesterday morning, about 170 miles from the Mexico-Guatemala border. That is where many of the caravan members snuck past authorities a week ago and crossed in rafts. According to CNN, it's still too soon to know exactly where the bulk of this caravan will travel. Migrants in the caravan tell CNN they're fleeing poverty and violence and that they're not deterred by the Trump administration's plans to deploy troops to the border. An urgent three-day nationwide manhunt for the suspect that sent bombs to former presidents, top Democratic officials, and CNN may be, may be at the end. The FBI has taken a suspect into custody in South Florida. Natasha Chen reports. We 
we have arrested Cesar Sayoc in connection with this investigation. 56-year-old Cesar Sayoc is facing up to 48 years in prison, charged with at least five federal crimes. These charges may uh, change or expand as the investigation proceeds. Investigators say it was a fingerprint found on one of the packages addressed to Congresswoman Maxine Waters that led them to him. There is also a possible DNA connection between samples collected from pieces of two different IEDs mailed in separate envelopes and a sample previously collected from Sayoc in connection with an earlier arrest down in Florida. Then investigators tailed Sayoc, tracking him on his cell phone before making their arrest outside of an auto zone, waiting until he was in a public place to arrest him, thereby avoiding the danger of confronting him at an address associated with him. Sayoc's past has been unraveling since his arrest, revealing a dark history of at least nine arrests, including threats to blow up a Florida power company. According to police reports, he sent them a warning saying it would be worse than September 11th. Sayoc has also been making threats against high profile people in the media on his Twitter account, mainly directed at CNN journalists. Even with Sayoc in custody, investigators are stressing it does not mean the threat is over. Today's arrest doesn't mean we're all out of the woods. There may be other packages in transit now. In Plantation, Florida, Natasha Chen reporting. The FBI confirmed on Twitter 11 suspicious packages have been recovered. Two winners have been announced for Saturday's Powerball jackpot. The winners are from New York and Iowa. According to CNN, the two tickets match all winning numbers on the ticket, and the winners will split the estimated $687.8 million. While there were only two winners for the number one prize, there were 17 other winners in Florida, Texas, and nine other states. According to New York Times, Brad Pascal the, tr the campaign manager for President Trump's planned re-election effort in 2020 has never run for another political race. Pascal believes he will be the, he will be able to be able to successful in the upcoming campaign race. In a quote, Pascal says, "I may not be the right choice for everyone, but I am the right choice for him." Eric Trump and Jared Kushner chose Pascal earlier this year for the 2020 election. Brazilians voted in the country's next presidential election. According to CNN, this presidential election is one of the most polarizing and violent campaigns in its history. Juan Bonzero was ahead of Fernando Haddad earlier in the race. The election has caused hostility and violence throughout Brazil. Polls closed early this afternoon as Bolsonaro fell short 50% of votes that was needed to secure his presidency. Three Israeli boys between the ages of 13 and 14 have been killed in an airstrike. An Islamic aircraft opened fire on the victims who approached the fence and appeared to be placing an improvised explosive device in place. The strike occurred in the southeastern Gaza Strip. According to Al Jazeera News, the killings come a day after Palestinian group Islamic Jihad announced an Egypt-brokered ceasefire with Israel. The owner of a Premier League soccer team, Leicester City, is dead after a fatal accident last night. The team's owner was traveling back after a match with West Ham when his helicopter crashed, killing him and four members of his staff. Today, bouquets of flowers and rats were left by fans outside the stadium as well as candles. A group congregated around a large statue of the Hindu god Kadesh. Thousands of disgruntled citizens held a sit-in on the Capitol Hill overlooking the ancient Roman Forum in central Rome on Saturday morning to protest the degradation of the city under the leadership of the populist five-star movement, Mayor Virginia Raggi. CNN's Barbie Nadeau reports. The Eternal City, one of the most beautiful places on Earth. But lately, it isn't so majestic. Thousands of Romans gathered on Saturday by Mayor Virginia Raggi's office to complain about the state of their city. They blame her and her populist political party, the Five Star Movement. Francesca Barzini is one of the organizers of the demo. Nothing works in Rome. I mean, nothing. No buses are passing, the metro stops every other day, the trash is everywhere, boars are coming from the countryside to eat the trash. 
This is what they're complaining about. Piles of uncollected garbage, lack of city services, streets so neglected they're dangerous to drive on. Over the last two years, Romans have had to deal with burning buses, wild boars foraging within the city limits, scavenger seagulls, and rodents. Romans say basta, enough. They want their city clean again. Romans have their hands dirty too. You can't blame City Hall for everything, like mattresses thrown on the street like this. Luca Laurenti, a biologist, agrees that Romans should do more. This is the eternal city, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. So uh, we have to cure this city. We have to love this city. But it will take more than a demo to fix Rome's problems. After all, Rome wasn't built in a day. And it won't be cleaned up in one day either. Barbie Lazzanado for CNN, Rome. Citizens of Rome hope to see progress in the cleaning up of their city. Coming up in sports, James Cattato. And you're watching WTOP 10 Nightly News. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity. And the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. And then she was like, yeah, and I was like, no. And then she was like, yeah, and I was like, yeah. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God, Ryan just texted me. Oh my god, what did he say? Netflix and chill? Netflix and chill, that's like so last year. It's all about WTOP movies on demand and chill. You are so right. <laughs> Yo, bro, what's wrong? Yo, bro, my girl left me, bro. But why? Because I don't watch WTOP 10 Movies on Demand. P10 Nightly News. I'm James Catato coming at you with this Sunday night sports update. We're talking a lot of sports tonight, so let's get right into it. The Oswego men's hockey team capped off their preseason with an impressive 5-3 come from behind win over Carlton Place Canadians this past Saturday. After facing a 2-0 deficit to the CCHL club at one point in the first period, Oswego stormed back and scored four unanswered goals. Leading the charge was coincidentally enough former Carlton Ford Travis Broman. On top of big contributions from Tanner Spink and Anthony Passero, Broman was able to snag a goal and an assist, lifting the Lakers over a gritty Canadian side to close the curtains on a perfect preseason. The Lakers will open their regular season play on home ice when they host the Red Dragons of Cortland this Friday at 7 p.m. Speaking of opening up the regular season, the Oswego women's hockey team took their inaugural weekend on the road and walked away with two dominating wins over King's College and Wilkes University. The Lakers would net a total of 15 goals and would get on the bus back to Oswego conceding only one. Led by junior Aaron Stewart, who contributed three goals and three assists on the weekend, the Lakers looked to be in near-perfect form when they took the ice. The ladies hope to ride the wave of electric offense and impenetrable defense when they travel to Buffalo for a doubleheader against the Buff State Bengals this Friday and Saturday. 
The first major trade in MMA history is officially a done deal, and some would say that it includes one of the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighters to ever step foot inside the octagon. Former UFC flyweight champion Demetrius Johnson is headed to the One Fighting Championship after UFC President Dana White penned a deal to swap him with 1FC's welterweight champion Ben Askren. Now, this isn't the first time former UFC champs going to a new fighting promotion is a new thing. In fact, former lightweight champion Eddie Alvarez just announced that he, in fact, would be leaving the UFC for 1FC as well. With this historic trade, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson will officially be closing the door on his Hall of Fame career with the UFC after a tough decision loss to current flyweight champion Henry Cejudo. DJ sported a record of 27-3-1 and, and was the number seven pound-for-pound -pound fighter before the trade was announced. Switching from the mat to the gridiron, Dino Babers, take a bow. For the first time in 17 years, the Syracuse Orange football team has cracked the AP Top 25 poll. The Orange received the honor after defeating last week's number 22 ranked North Carolina State by a score of 51 to 41. Now 6-2 on the season, Q still has some tough competition in the coming weeks. With number 3 Notre Dame and number 24 Boston College patiently waiting for the Orange, the now bowl-eligible club led by Babers has an opportunity to get the program to its best record since 2001. Now let's go to the hardwood, some NBA basketball. The Golden State Warriors, the Golden, the Golden State Warriors traveled to Brooklyn to face the Nets. You see Steph Curry in warm-ups, and the two-time NBA MVP is just having fun. He shoots it off a one knee, and ladies and gentlemen, it would be Curry the entire game as he knocks down the contested tray ball from way downtown. Watch the splash zone. Dubs knotted up early. Nets would battle in this one, though. Joe Harris, a lot of first team minutes, 11 more than his career average. He knocks down that three, nets up eight to seven. Curry off the pass from Draymond Green here, and they teach it in high school, catch and shoot, but this man's got the fastest release ever in the NBA, and he knocks that one down. But it will be a shootout between Curry and Harris as Harris yet again knocks down another one, and he says, Clay Thompson, you're not blocking that three. He puts the Nets within seven, and oh wow, Steph Curry. He missed the shot. He is actually human. Well, fall Curry after the miss. All the way from corner to corner, you see the ball movement. He actually takes a dribble off the pass from Draymond Green and knocks down the trifecta. He is a computer cheat code. He would finish the game with 35 points. Curry would also break a record as he passes two former Warriors in Jamal Wilkes and Jason Richardson on the career scoring list. Those 35 points were a part of 14 672 on the five-time All-Stars career. Curry would lead the Warriors past the Brooklyn Nets 120 to 114 and push the Nets record to two and four on the regular season. So pretty good basketball happening in New York, even though the Nets lost that game. Not looking too bad. They got the ninth seed in the Eastern Conference. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you, James. That's our report for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for Excuse Me What. Thank you for watching, everyone. Have a great night. Everybody has a dream. Nah, it's fine. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Uh, I don't want to just like leave this somewhere that it's gonna break. We're already like we're already struggling it up. Yeah. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Is how are you precious okay? Mm. Take out the pressure. It's way too cheesy. Okay, yeah. Just go, sure. hey, how are you? Nope. How's your day? Yeah. Oh, don't yeah. be cheesy. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, uh, what'd she say? She's still typing. I'm not sure. She never takes this long. Huh. I wouldn't worry about it. Give it a few minutes. Okay.